Wojciech Hurczak. I'm leading the lymphoma team at the Jagiellon University Department of Hematology. That's in Krakow, Poland. Well, frankly, I see no challenges for the rituximum biosimilars. They will just be. But the true question is uh, what we doctors will, you, will use. Uh, I had a couple of presentations that tried to prove that there is no alternative for rituximab in the first line lymphoma therapy, at least in diffuse large B cell or follicular lymphoma. And I really do think that uh, the only competitor for rituximab biosimilars is a subcute rituximab, which is uh, a newer and a better drug and definitely easier to use. So um, the first challenge for the biosimilars would be of how fast you can infuse them. If uh, per protocol you would have to infuse them for four to six hours, everyone would go for subcute rituximab. If we have the data that we could uh, use them in a fast one hour infusion, the world will be interesting. But it doesn't really matter for us doctors whether we use subcute or uh, biosimilar rituximab. What it does matter is that uh, there is a price revolution which follows uh, the registration of the two compounds we did. I was proud to participate uh, in both uh, Sandos and Seltrin rituximab development. Maybe it was not fascinating scientifically, but I had a feeling that it's something we had to do, something like a biosimilar for biobetter. It will mean a lot of, uh, e uh, it will have a large economical impact. Uh, assumptions are that above 30 to 40 million euros every year. It was uh, quite unique because uh, we actually published both clinical trials of competitive pharmaceutical companies in the same issue of Lancet Hematology. Uh, it was so that among us scientists developing those biosimilars there was absolutely no disagreement. We wanted to make uh, a strong point and uh, indeed uh, uh, we succeeded because uh, we had the editorial, we had uh, 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 the biosimilar uh, manuscript was regarded the editor's choice, then we had a couple of letters. We just wanted to have uh, a very loud message that biosimilars are coming. And indeed I think that uh, they are being marketed to most European countries at the moment. About the trials, they were very uneventful, very simple. Uh, the general idea was that um, in a biosimilar development we do not need uh, uh, the classical endpoints like progression-free survival and overall survival. Just for your own knowledge, if uh, a PFS uh, trial were to be designed, we would have to randomize over 5,000 patients, which is uh, not uh, necessary and not possible. Uh, primary endpoints was the response rate, and in both trials uh, we proved it was absolutely identical. Um, now, as far as f uh, for the secondary endpoints, uh, uh, as far as we look at the secondary endpoints, there is a statistical power difference between the Sanders trial, where we had over 600 patients on board, and Selchan trial, where we had 120 patients on board. Nevertheless, none of the trials revealed any significant difference between originator and biosimilar. Well, you know, in Poland, follicular lymphoma is a rare entity. You got 30-35% um, in the States, maybe 25% in UK, 20% in Europe, and we have 6%. So, um, for us, it's not a big deal. There are a lot of therapeutic options for follicular lymphomas. What we know is that um, we do not treat follicular lymphomas with chemotherapy alone. It's immunochemotherapy or even immunotherapy on its own. So definitely, if we have a cheaper and more affordable option, uh, there is a possibility that more patients will be treated on the with immunotherapy, like rituximab monotherapy. Well, we had a long-lasting story of BTK inhibitors in monotherapy. Uh, the original paper was published in 2013 in New England by Michael Wang and um, it was ibrutinib. Now, uh, 
We also uh, we managed to have another trial completed and announced here in Ash. Michael Wang is also the first author on Aclabrutinib. Now, they were not randomized comparisons, but uh, definitely both uh, response rate, CR rate, and uh, progression-free survival are better in Aclabrutinib. And uh, adverse events are less pronounced. Just to name that uh, we didn't observe any atrial fibrillations and the discontinuations uh, of the patients while on the trial were really scanty. So um, the BTK inhibitor is uh, the necessity, but the good question is what should we do after the BTK inhibitor fails? And that's an open question. Well, we had the whole conference about it, but if I am to say about one combo, and I specifically say combo because if you look uh, uh, at ASH 2017, we do not have that many new compounds being introduced. It is the era of combos at the moment. So we have a relatively easy combo, lenalidomide plus monoclonal. And if you look at the results of that, if you have rituximab with lenalidomide, it gives you uh, end of fuse large B cell lymphoma, for example, 20% response rate. We're talking about relapsing refractory patients. If you go for an obinutizumab plus uh, uh, lenalidomide, it's getting up higher. If you go for more 208, which is more phosis 208, and uh, another novel anti CD19 monoclonal antibody plus lenalidomide, the response rate gets up to 60%. And this is a very difficult patient population, relapsing refractory diffuse large B cells. Now, the same combination, lenalidomide plus monoclonal, has been investigated in the first line, like first line follicular lymphoma, <coughs> not, I mean, in relapsing refractory setting follicular lymphoma, it works mon wonderfully. It's becoming one of the standards of care. But in the first line follicular lymphoma, it's doing the job. And we heard a presentation uh, this ash. Um, coming from America about uh, lenalidomide and rituximab and first-line mantle cell lymphoma and they had a remarkable four-year-long observations with um, the response rate and progression-free survival curves comparable with chemoimmunotherapy. So maybe a non-chemo option will really be the, the reality. So again, if uh, I were to name anything which uh, I think is uh, striking, is a combo of lenalidomide plus monoclonal antibodies.